Hey guys, today we're going to do chapter 1, section 5, angle pair relationships. Hit pause and try out this word problem. Please write an algebraic equation first and then solve to find the two numbers. If you need help getting started here, the sum of two numbers is 90, so x plus y equals 90. One number is 4 times the other, so I just chose y to equal 4x. We're going to plug in 4x where we see y here. So that would be our equation. So go ahead and solve that equation for x, and then go back and find what each of the two numbers are. All right, so the two numbers are, when you solve for x, you get x equals 18, dividing 90 by 5. And then I always underline or box this part here, plug in 18 for x to find your y. So your two numbers would be 18 and 72. All right, some of this we have seen before in our notes, but if you didn't write down, we're going through it again. Complementary angles are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Another special angle would be a straight angle, which is 180 degrees. So supplementary angles are two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. Adjacent angles are two angles that share a vertex and side. An example of adjacent uh, adjacent angles would be same vertex. So these two angles here, this one and this one, are adjacent because they have the common vertex here and the common side. The side could be a ray, a line segment, a line. An example of not adjacent angles would be if you have something like this and this. These are not adjacent because they don't share a common vertex. They do share a common side here, but they don't share a common vertex. So this one is yes, this one is no. All right, take a minute and illustrate these examples of complementary and supplementary angles. If you already have them in your notes, great. You can always use your ID card as a straight edge to draw these rays. Notice for complementary and supplementary angles, as long as you have two angles, sum is 90 degrees, even if they're adjacent or not adjacent, they're still complementary angles. So any 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle are complementary, regardless of where they are in your figure. Same goes for supplementary angles. Let's try two practice problems here. Given that angle one is a complement of angle two, so underline complement so you know what you're working with here, and the measure of angle one is 68. Find the measure of angle two. So the definition of complement is two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Notice these are not numbers. They are talking about what angles you're talking about. So we can't add the one and the two together. Now replace with the information that you have so measure of angle one is 68 degrees. So replace angle one with 68. So finding the measure of angle two. So go ahead and solve this equation for the measure of angle two. If you got angle two is, I guess I should put measure. The measure of angle two is equal to 22 degrees. 
All right, number two's practice problem. Given that angle three is a supplement to angle four, and the measure of angle four is 56 degrees, find the measure of angle three. So this one is talking about supplement. So what does it mean for two angles to be supplementary to each other? What's the relationship? So go ahead and use that knowledge to help you by setting up your equation like this, but it's not going to be 90. Instead, it's going to be 180 degrees. And go ahead and solve that equation for the measure of angle 3. If you got the measure of angle 3 is 124 degrees, you are correct. Subtract 180 minus 120, oh, 180 minus 56, and you should get 124. All right, when viewed from the side, the frame of a ball return net forms a pair of supplementary angles. So it was hard when I first looked at this figure here. This is your vertex. Here are your two angles, the 4x plus 8 degrees and the x plus 2. You are allowed to assume when you see a line that the two sub, uh, adjacent angles that create that line are supplementary. They add to be 180. So find the measure of angle B, C, E, so this one here, and the measure of E, C, D, which is this little one here. So first, those two angles are supplementary, so we have the 4x plus 8, which is this first angle here, and the x plus 2. Those are our two angles, and we are adding them up to equal 180. In order to find the measure of each of the angles, we first have to solve this equation for x. So go ahead and solve this equation for x first, and then pause. All right, you should have gotten x equals 34. 170 divided by 5. Now, that is what x equals, but you were asked... Oops, you are asked to find the measure of BCE, this big one here, and ECD. So in green, 4x plus 8 is the expression that is talking about angle BCE. So we're going to plug in 34 in for x and solving that out. So 136 plus 8. 144 degrees would be the measure of BCE. Go ahead and take a minute and solve for the measure of ECD. If you got 36, you are correct. 36 degrees. Don't forget your units. Another quick check you could do is make sure that they add to be 180, and in fact they do, so you are correct. So that's always a good extra check step that you can do to make sure that you got the correct answer. All right, two more definitions in this section. A linear pair, what we were just dealing with there, when you have two angles that create two adjacent angles that create a straight angle, 180, they are called a linear pair. Vertical angles are angles that are congruent, they're equal, and if you notice here there are two lines or even two line segments that intersect, there are angles that are across from each other that are the exact same, so in this case three and six. These two angles are congruent, they're the same exact measure, and four and five are congruent. So the pairs of vertical angles, three and six are vertical angles, and four and five are vertical angles. So draw these two figures and write what the names of these angles are. All right, draw this diagram, and I'd like you to take a few seconds and identify all of the linear pairs, pairs meaning two, so don't do more than two angles at a time, and also identify all of the vertical angle pairs as well.
All right, for the linear pairs, one and four create a linear pair. They create that line on the bo bottom left there. And also four and five create this line here. Any of the other ones, two, three, and five, there's three angles for that line, so they're not a linear pair. Pairs mean two. Vertical angles, the only pair in this figure is one and five. If you look here, this ray is only cutting this one in half. It does not go through. So we can't say that four is a vertical angle with two or three. A pair means it has this whole thing would have to be one angle, but since that ray cuts it off, that would not be a vertical angle there. All right, interpreting a diagram, looking at the diagram on the right, Pause this and read through all of the things that you are allowed to assume, assume about the points, the lines, the rays, what you are allowed to assume about this figure. So take a minute and read that. Make note of some of this in your notes so that you have it. These are things that you are allowed to assume just by looking at this figure without even being told anything. All right, looking at this, all of the points here are coplanar. Think the paper that they're on or the smart board that they're on, they are all on that plane. A, B, and C are collinear, and B is between A and C. Line A, C, ray B, D, and ray B, E all intersect at that point B there. Angle D, B, E, follow with your pen. D, B, E, and E, B, C are adjacent. They have that vertex B and the common side BE and ABC. So this one here, follow your pen. That is a straight line. And also point E is in the interior of this angle here. You're allowed to assume all of those. Things you are not allowed to assume by looking at that top figure. You cannot assume that AB is congruent to BC. It may look like that in the figure, but unless they have these tick marks, you cannot assume that. You also cannot assume that angle DBE and EBC, these two angles up here, this one and this one, you can't assume that they are congruent unless they show the arcs like they did down here. And lastly, you cannot assume that angle ABD is a right angle all of that information would need to be told to you through these. So tick marks mean congruent side lengths, line segments. The individual arcs mean congruent angles. And this little square box here means 90 degree right angle. This concludes this section. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And I will see you guys next class. Thanks, guys.